Hey there, Jeff McCartney from BunkSpeed here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to pick up where I left off in the Hypermove first run experience tutorial. We already have our model imported, painted up, and we've already done a quick render. Now what I want to do is drop on some basic textures, get a little more advanced with decals, and also do some simple animation. So to start, let's jump down into materials mode here. What I want to do is apply a graphic to the screen to make it look like this thing is turned on. I'm going to first hide the glass outer layer I have here by control H. That's the hotkey for hide. Now I have this material on just this screen plane and I'm going to bring the color of that up a little bit so it's a little more neutral. Click add slash edit texture and then in the color map I can bring in a texture that I've made just for this purpose and it's my phone screen dot tiff. Click open and that's going to apply that to that thumbnail and you can see that there. It's a simple little graphic but it doesn't show up on the model quite yet and that's because in this specific case this model doesn't have any proper mapping from the modeling software. So what I need to do now is select the part specifically and select planar Y mapping in this case. And then I can use this widget to rotate my mapping and then use the scale here to bring that up in scale and then just slide it into position. And basically I want it about there. Looks a little washed out. And the reason for that is that I don't have it blending with the underlying material. If I click that, I can blend it with the underlying material, click go to material and adjust the underlying material. I can even give it a tint like that. Now I want to add a little more of an illumination effect to this. So what I'm going to do is change this material from a plastic over to an emissive. And then I can set that emissive to white and increase the intensity to something like 1.5. Now that's going to cast a little light from the screen. If I right click and select show all, it's going to bring that glass back. And if I want that glass to be a little more reflective or a little darker, just adjust some of these settings. Bring up the IOR to get a little more reflection. Now the next thing I want to do is use a decal to apply some basic textures to these buttons. So I'm going to go down into decals mode, right click, select new decal, and we will bring in the phone main buttons.tiff file. Now this is a TIFF file that has an alpha channel and you're going to see how that comes into play here. Just drag and drop that onto a surface. You can see that this is a square image with a black background here on the thumbnail, but since it has an alpha channel for the background, it actually is transparent. You see through to the underlying material behind the graphics. Now what I want to do is position these onto these keys. So what I would need to do is use the arrows here to move that into place. And you can see when it goes over the keys, it's no longer is being projected properly. And that is because I need to project it to multiple parts by enabling this option here. Now I can just rotate that a bit to get that properly aligned, move that into place, and I'm going to scale that up quite a bit here. So I'm just gonna bring that forward and then move this back into position and actually scale it up even a bit more. All right, once I have that in position, I can do a couple more cool things with this. Right now you'll notice the really flat basic material. What I can do is go to my materials and I can apply any material to my decal. If I right click and select new material, I can just place that on there. And now I can adjust this material to change some of the surface properties we get on that uh, decal. If I change it to paint, for example, I get a nice sharp reflection. It's like a nice shiny application of that decal. I could change that to any number of other materials as well as wipe out the color information from the decal and use just the decals alpha channel as a stencil. Use as stencil only is the option you want there. Now I can apply any material to this alpha channel and it's going to come up with those material properties and that's all you're going to see. So in this case we have a nice little brushed metal applied there. Now what I want to do is animate this thing now. So what I need to do is set up a joint or a group that allows me to move the top parts of this phone separately from the bottom parts. If I zoom in here, you can see there's a splitting line there. Go to models, set mode, parts mode, and we're going to create a joint out of several of these parts. If I look at my joints mode here quickly, right now we just have one joint. It's called the root joint. This is a parent joint and it's going to be above all other joints that we make. So if I go to parts mode here and start selecting some parts, I can then assign them to a new joint, which is going to become a child joint to do that, I'm just going to click new child joint. And now when I go to joints mode, we have a new joint that we can move. If I move this, we can basically open up the phone. Now I missed a couple of parts and that's not a problem. All I need to do is go back up into parts mode, select these pieces I've missed by holding down control. Once I have them selected, select assign to joint. 
select that new joint in this joint selection window and click OK. That, those parts are now going to snap into position with the rest of the joint. And there we go. We have our open phone. I'm going to jump back down into materials mode and finish painting up the parts that were inside of the phone that we didn't previously see. We have a plastic here and we can do a plastic there as well. And I'm also going to apply a graphic to the keys here. So I'm going to make a copy of my plastic here, apply that to that and then click add slash edit texture. And I'm going to bring in a keys texture that I've made for this keypad. So double click phone keyboard dot tiff. This image is yet again a tiff with an alpha channel that lets us have just the keys shown and then we'll see through to the underlying material. And also we need to change the mapping. So I'm gonna do a planar Y mapping again and you can see that those keys start to show up. I'm gonna rotate, holding shift to constrain my rotation to those standard 90 degree, 45 degree type rotations. And then I need to scale this up. When doing texture mapping, I can scale it up with my texture percent slider here. Do that basically like that. Bring that down just a bit, and that's starting to look pretty good. We can fine tune that all day if we want, but just get that in there roughly. I can also drag the side boxes here to fine tune it, and that's pretty good. Now that I have my materials set up the way I want them, I can continue on to animating this thing. So I'm gonna go up, back up to model set, back into joints, right click on my joint here, and I can add a keyframe. and. What I'm gonna do is right click, add keyframe, now open up Windows Animation Timeline, and now we have a keyframe in our animation timeline. This animation timeline is very simple. You have a current time indicator represented by this yellow flag and an end of time indicator represented by the red flag. I'm gonna set that thing to three seconds and progress forward in time to about the halfway point here. And now I'm going to select my top joint here, the new joint, and move it to the closed position. That's going to automatically create a new keyframe at that point in time that's going to interpret between those keyframes and give me my motion. If I want, I could have this go along some crazy path like this, and it's going to automatically interpret that path to smoothly go between those points. Delete that keyframe and it reverts back to this simple motion. Then at the end of time, I'm gonna have it open back up. And there we go, that's nice simple animation for you. I'm gonna add a little something to this by going to my models mode and adding a turntable animation to my model. Right click, add slash remove turntable animation. This does a couple of things. It creates an animation on a turntable and the, the model actually follows that turntable. So you have a physical turntable representing it. I can hide that and my model will still rotate as though it's on that turntable. Now I'm gonna hop down into animations mode and I'm going to edit the turntable animation options. Right now it's lasting 90 seconds. I'm gonna bring that down to three seconds. And right now it's rotating 360 degrees in three seconds. Take that to, let's say, 45 degrees. So now that should be a nice simple animation. Just rotates and stops. I'm gonna have my camera animate so that I keep everything in frame. What I wanna do here is go to camera mode. At the beginning of time, right click, add keyframe. Go to, let's say, about this keyframe, and I'm gonna move my camera, keep everything in frame, right click, add keyframe. Go to the end of time here, and let's just move it out for effect here. Right click, add keyframe, and this little auto end button will snap my endpoint to the last keyframe there. So let's just take a look at what we have here. That's looking pretty good. And I'd say I'm about ready to output this thing. So I'm gonna go to ray trace, Dial in some settings here. Let's do 800 by 600, some just normal quality settings. I can even optimize it a little bit. Maybe I don't need that much anti-aliasing. Maybe I don't need that much self-shadow quality. And I'm going to go into animation mode. And then we have the FPS and start frame and end frame. I'm just going to leave that all at default. I'm not going to build the AVI file. I'm going to show you how to manually do that with uh, QuickTime Pro. So I'm gonna disable that, click OK. And of course, if you want, you can build the AVI file and get an AVI file that has a certain compression as determined by the codex available on your machine. Now this animation is starting, it's rendering, and we can click details here and see it's gonna take about eight seconds a piece. So while that's working, I'm gonna make some tea. All right, and I'm back finishing up the last few frames here. And then we'll go ahead and compile them using QuickTime Pro, which is 20 or 30 bucks to buy. It's really the simplest way to compile these frames into an MOV format. See here, these frames are going into the Hypermove content folder, specifically the animations folder. 
And this should be the last frame here for our three second animation at 30 frames per second. That gives us this folder here. Let's look at that. Okay, you know, the texture isn't exactly right there, but it's a quick preview. I'm gonna open up QuickTime Pro here. I'm gonna go to File, Open Image Sequence, browse to that animation, and let's see what we have here. Just select the first frame there, set your frames per second, click Open. Let's see what that looks like. Ah, oh, that's not bad. I'm not happy with my bump map that's speckly there, but other than that, pretty pleased with it. Uh, so once again, thanks for looking into Hypermove and trying it out, and let us know if you have any problems or any questions. Good luck.